today we have the first review of Intel's 12,900KS, power draw of NVIDIA's 4090, Intel's ARC GPU gets tested, and these are AMD's new lineup of GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, the first ever review of Intel's new special edition 12900KS has dropped. And of course, the CPU is expected to be released tomorrow. And if you'd like a reminder of that, make sure to join the GamerMeld notification squad in the description. For those who don't know, the 12900KS is a heavily bin 12900K to get it up to 5.5 GHz. The issue is that it comes in at a whopping $739, so it's quite a bit more than the regular 12900K. And that leads us to the review. It was done by Tom's Hardware, and unfortunately, when it comes to performance, there isn't a big difference. In gaming at 1080p, the KS model is a mere 2.7% faster, and it's basically the the same at 1440p thanks to the GPU bottleneck. The 12900KS does get a bit better in professional workloads, but then the 5950X could be a better option depending on what applications you use. The Adobe Suite benchmarks could make it worth the price difference for some professionals, but when it comes to gamers, I don't recommend the 12900KS at all. The CPU only showed a difference at 1080p, but if you buy this, you're probably wanting to play at higher resolutions. And even at 1080p, it was less than 3% faster, yet cost 25% more. Basically, even for those who want the fastest no matter the cost, these margins are really bad. Now, I know that I've talked about this a lot, but if you do want to dive deeper into technology and computer science, there really is no better place than Brilliant. And yes, they did sponsor this video, but it's true. Brilliant is an amazing tool that teaches you by showing you, so you're not sitting there memorizing formulas all day. You're actually doing it, which is the best way to learn. But Brilliant wasn't just made by random people. Their courses are perfectly crafted by some of the brightest minds from Microsoft, MIT, and more. I can personally vouch for their amazing courses. You can even try it out for free with no obligations when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt or click the link in the description. And if you're one of the first 200 users who visit the link, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Next up for today, while well, I've been discussing the power draw of next-gen cards for quite a while now, we finally have a good idea of what the final products will be. But before I get to that, if you remember in a recent story, I discussed a report from Igor's lab. In it, he mentioned that the current 3090 Ti looks to be pin compatible with next-gen cards, meaning third-party vendors could reuse their 3090 Ti designs. Well, in a new story from Igor's lab, he claims that they can't be used one-to-one. One. Apparently, the old chip can be put on the new PCB, but the next-gen chip won't work on the 3980Ti. With that said, manufacturers are playing around with it. As Twitter user Ghost Motley showed, quite a few custom designs show missing components for power delivery. We're talking VRAM, MOSFETs, and even room for a second 16-pin power connector. So they may still be able to use the boards, but it more seems they're simply trying things out. Either way, this brings us to the power draw. Before the the RTX 3000 cards launched, Igor's lab estimated the power draw for those GPUs, and he was spot on. Well, he's done it again for the 4090. And according to him, NVIDIA's next-gen flagship is set to have a TGP, or total graphics power, of 600 watts. That means the GPU and memory accounting for voltage loss, etc. The issue with this is that the new 16-pin power connector only goes up to 600 watts. So any third-party vendors who want to get over the base model's power draw will need a second connector. And given it requires a whopping four 8-pin connectors to deliver the full power to one PCI Express 5.0 connector, it could require up to 8 8 pin connectors to get the full power out of 2. Of course, I highly doubt anything will actually take 1200 watts, but who knows? Things are getting pretty wild. You might need a nuclear power plant just to play Minecraft by next year. Next up, we have quite possibly the first third party test of Intel's newly released Arc GPU. 
In a new video from Benchmark Lab, they test the new Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro with the 12700H and ARC A370M. In the video, they pit it against an Acer Nitro 5 with a 5600H and GTX 1650. Of course, the 5600H is last gen's chip, but it doesn't seem to matter because Intel's new chip gets crushed by the competition. We're talking between around 14 to 25 percent in most of the tests. Of course, this could be because Intel needs to work on their drivers. I mean, this is their first real discrete GPU minus DG1, but it's still pretty bad. The only hope is that it was only using 35 watts, but it is supposed to go to 50 watts like the 1650. I guess time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, it looks like the long-rumored RX 6050 series of cards from AMD have been confirmed. In a new report by Video Cards, they received some new information from one of their most trustworthy leakers. For starters, they got an image of the upcoming GPUs, which, as you can see, confirmed the earlier leak that claimed AMD would black out their reference design. And moving back to the picture, the cards shown are the 6950XT, the 6750XT, and the 6650XT. So they aren't just releasing the highest end model. This is like a full new stack. As for specs, the only thing we really know is that all of them come with 18 gigabit per second memory. They could still come with higher clocks, higher board power, etc. One thing video cards notice is that the 6650 XT comes with two fans instead of one from the 6600 XT. Of course, that image was just for marketing anyway. So for the lower end model, AMD may not officially release a reference design, but this would likely be for marketing at least. Finally, the GPUs are set to release on May 10th instead of the initial April 20th. At the end of the day, we'll have to see how well they perform, but this does look to at least confirm that they are in fact coming. So while that does it for today, are you ready for AMD's new GPUs, or would you rather just pick up one of Intel's ARC GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out brilliant.org slash gamermail. And as always, have a great day!